My name is Michael Storms. That's my name before I became Muslim. Uh, I was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I'm 27 years old. My name after I became Muslim is Muhammad Islam. My childhood was very, it was very difficult. Um, my family, I came from a very violent background. Um, my family are criminals, you could say, uh, very bad people. So that was my upbringing, crime and, and violence, drugs, things like this. I don't know my father. My father left when I was two. Uh, my mother deported him back to the States. Um, and it was me and my two sisters with my mother. And then there's my uncles and my cousins. And they're kind of like always living where we were living. And it's a really tight knit family, right? With relation to bad stuff. <laughs> I thought the world was a very negative place. Uh, because of my family, and like you were saying, because of the environment, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't see too many, uh, positives, so, and you could also say that my family kind of restricted my, um, access to other things. They wanted me to do things with them, so it reinforced that, uh, there's nothing good going on, right? When I was younger, I felt afraid, but then when I grew up a little bit, it became pretty normal. And so, the people in my family I wasn't afraid of anymore. I was uh, part of the team. But um, initially, yeah, because when you're young, you're pure, right? And to be bombarded with a lot of bad things makes you, uh, makes you uneasy. Like any hardship, you get, you get accustomed to it, though, right? When I was... Um, about eight years old, I would go to, this was very, very rare. This is what before I started doing other things for money. I would go to uh, a bakery called Paradise Bakery, right? And I would wash dishes uh, for hours on end, but I was too young to be paid money. So what Norris would do is he would pay me in food, some bread and jam and dates and little sweets and stuff like this. And I would go home and feed my two sisters that because my mother would be off doing some other crime or she'd be in jail or something like this, right? Or I'd be out all night collecting recyclables so I can come home and feed my sisters in the morning. When you see that you haven't eaten for a couple of days, you know, and there's nothing, so you have to try to do something to feed yourself and feed your, your family, right? So my other family wouldn't really take care of us. I started my little uh, career when I was 14, you could say, and I was never close enough with too many people to, to say that I had friends that I could call on. I never really trusted anybody, and uh, school wasn't for me. I never finished school. I didn't have time for it. Uh, it didn't appeal as much as what I was doing appealed at the time. I would rob, uh, steal a lot of things, and uh, assault people, things like that. I was never alone, but I felt lonely, right? So I felt like there was like a void, something missing. I don't even like recalling the past, but it's okay for the interview, right? So. A lot of the crimes that I would do, I would do just for the sake of wanting to do it, boredom. The payoff was like a bonus, but uh, if I wanted, like, for example, steal a car because I didn't want to walk somewhere, I would just take somebody's car. When I, when I was young, I lost all concern for people's feelings and whatnot. The way that I grew up, I felt no one's concerned for my feelings, so if I hurt somebody, I don't care about what they think or feel or... You know, I didn't care at the time at all. I was in my cell. It was towards the end of my sentence. I was just about to get out. And I didn't want to, I wanted to do something else. I didn't want to continue being bad, you could say. 
And so the way that I started to ask questions when I was by myself was along the lines of, uh, I don't know if there's a God or if you exist or I could be talking to myself for all I know. I don't know why I'm alive. Things like this. But if there's, a, if there's a reason why I'm alive, or if I'm not talking to myself and there is a real creator, as people would call it, can you show me why I'm alive? And, and then I would just talk and say, for example, I stressed the point that I needed it to be shown to me because I didn't trust anybody, let alone somebody telling me about God, right? I had a brother named Ahmed talk to me about Islam initially, but... Again, he told me so I didn't believe him. And he would mention things like uh, heaven and hell. And I didn't believe what he was saying until I had a dream of both the places. And even then I was being resistant. I was, re you know, I was like, maybe that was a fluke and this and that. Right? I had a dream of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. <coughs> uh, so things happened to me when I was awake and when I was asleep. That's that's and a lot of it happened to me in a very small amount of time. As soon as Ahmed started talking to me about Islam, I didn't believe him. Allah already knew that I wouldn't believe him, but that was like Islam, Muhammad, Allah, and it's like whatever. And then these things started happening. And then I recalled what I asked for when I was in jail for things that happened to me. So I can't deny it, right? It was very, very difficult. Uh, doing what somebody else wanted you to do. It was so difficult for me, right? right? Even God, you know, I struggle with it even today. It was very, very, very difficult. And I went to the mushy and I started and I sat down and uh, actually I sat, I sat down on my, I was on my knees and uh, just sitting back like people do when they're finished for the prayer. And I just started crying, right? And uh, I was crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and drooling. I couldn't control myself, right? So it was like 20 years of, uh, of betrayal and stress and violence and anger and all these things uh, built up. And then it's like Allah allowed me to just get rid of it all. And I cried for a very, 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 very long time, right? And I, get, I mean, I couldn't move, right? I was just crying. <laughs> and then I remember saying at the end of it, you know, all right, all right, all right, I'll, I'll try to do what you, know, what you want me to do. I am most pleased that I pray. Yeah, it's important, very, very important. A feeling of safety from Allah and uh, from his punishment you could say that's what I get out of it like a calmness and a that I'm alright for for right now until the next prayer comes in or until tomorrow my future I, I see it as positive in the dunya because it's going to be controlled and very uh, simple and, and and that's why uh, you know that's my positive future here very simple lifestyle that's positive don't hurt nobody don't get hurt inshallah if i get forgiven in the next life that's what makes me feel really positive right <laughs> if i get forgiven it'll be great inshallah <laughs>